Okay guys, so for this video, um, now that we have completed the prologue and we've officially become the Pathfinder, I wanted to take a quick break and read up on some of our codexes. Um, and I've specifically, for your convenience, uh, I'm going to make these codex videos their own video. So for those of you who are not interested in codexes, can just skip over this um, video and go over to the next. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and go through or Codex here. The journey so far, as you explore Andromeda, the allies, enemies, and choices you make will have a significant impact on the future of Helios and those who call the cluster home. Finding a home. The Helios cluster is nothing like the initiative expected. The Pathfinder faces terrible dangers and unimaginable wonders in the search for a safe place to call home. Crisis on Habitat 7. During your trial by fire on Habitat 7, you tried you tried to initiate peaceful first contact with the aliens you met despite their hostility, found the cave. Oh, this is pretty cool that it got to tell you everything that you were doing. Found the cave full of plant life that survived from the planet's golden world era, discovered alien shuttlecraft of unknown origin, rescued Greer from his captors, expressed doubts about accepting the role of Pathfinder. I like that they're that they're all, you know, recording all of these things about your writer. The Pathfinder is more than a title. Like everyone else in the initiative, Ryder must decide who to become in the new frontier of Helios. The ties that bind. Though you mourn the loss of your father, Alec, you were never as close as you could have been. This is so cool! Oh, I love this! I love that you're defining your history. This is so cool. I'm glad. Oh, gosh. Bioware, I'm so impressed. The Andromeda Initiative. The initiative was built by the efforts of thousands who devoted years of time and countless resources to reach the Andromeda Galaxy. These are the people, places, and organizations that make the Pathfinder's mission possible. Known associates, dossiers on Pathfinder writers, friends, allies, and ca contacts across the Helios Cluster. Oh wow, we've got a bunch here. So let's learn about more about our crew, shall we? This is, this is stuff I really enjoy, all this juicy lore. So excited to get a fuller picture of what the story is about, because story is number one for me. Sarah Ryder. Born your elder twin on the Citadel space station in 2163, Sarah grew up surrounded by a multitude of alien species, cultures, and histories. In her orientation interviews, she claimed that this sparked her fascination with science. With informal training, aided by Alec Ryder's N7 background, Sarah joined the Systems Alliance military which was continuing its search for Prothean technology after successful discoveries on Mars. Initially assigned to peacekeeping duties, Sarah was approached to serve a support role for these Prothean researchers. She often describes the thrill of serving with scientists like Matias Silva on the brink of the next great discovery. When Alec Ryder was dishonorably discharged due to his AI research, oh, he did AI research, which is what, probably where Sam came from, Internal memos show that this also effectively ended Sarah's career, but Andromeda presented the kind of scientific frontiers she had sought all her life. On arrival in Andromeda, Sarah's cryopod was damaged and her revival process interrupted. Dr. Lexi Tapero, Lexi Tapero advised keeping her in a medically induced coma to allow her to awaken naturally. Okay. Sam. Wham, bam, thank you, Sam. Officially designated as a simulated adaptive matrix, I am an artificial intelligence that acts as coordinating element between Pathfinder, Alec Ryder, and the rest of his team. My quantum processing power is used to conduct on-the-spot scans of alien worlds, assist in scientific study or tactical situations, and monitor the team's weapons and equipment. I am physically located on Arc Hyperion, in secure server banks collectively known as SAM Node. While my primary connection is to Alec Ryder via neural implant, I effectively serve as a mission computer for all team members during Pathfinder operations. I also collate and analyze data from numerous sources and compile it for later study. I am tasked with authoring and updating the Pathfinder team codex based on available information and discoveries as they are made. Okay, cool. Alec Ryder. Born on Earth in 2129, Alec Ryder says his love of new frontiers was fostered by a childhood in the Sierra Nevadas. According to his service record, he joined the Alliance military and was eventually assigned to John Grissom's historic expedition through the Charon Lee Relay. His experience made him a candidate for what would, would later be known as N7 training back on Earth, 
where he met Dr. Ellen Harlow. After their marriage, oh, Ellen is our mom's name. After their marriage, Alec continued military service, most notably on Shanxi in the first contact war against the Taurians. Assigned as a military attaché to the Citadel in the late 2160s, Alec became interested in artificial intelligence as a means of human advancement. His pursuit of this illegal technology led to a dishonorable discharge from the Alliance military. Ah, our, our father's seedy past. Contacted by the Andromeda Initiative, Alec found a sponsor to help complete his work. Let me guess. Cerberus? Question mark? Just a guess. Just a theory. A game theory. I am the product of that research, assist, uh, assisting not only the initiative, but Alec's new role as a pathfinder. Soon after our arrival at Andromeda in 2019, Alec Ryder died during operations on Habitat 7. I'm going to talk more about Cerberus when I go read about Cora Harper. Lieutenant Cora Harper, service number 6002 AC1762, is a human biotic and formerly an officer in the Systems Alliance military. Her screening interview states she was raised in poverty on an independent cargo freighter, joining the Alliance at 18 to obtain training for her powerful biotic abilities. Oh, she was raised in poverty. However, Cora claims her suspicion saw her talents as a liability, supported by test scores showing her abilities spike at abnormally high levels. She was transferred via the Citadel Council's Valkyrie program, a subset of their interspecies military integration plan, and placed with the Asari Commando unit Talion's Daughters. Though the activities of Asari Huntresses are typically sealed for 5,000 years, Korra has freely shared her experience on the record. Experiences on the record, really? Peacekeeping, counterterrorism, and hunting fugitives. Then, when she left Talion's Daughters for the Andromeda Initiative, that's really cool that she used to be a part of the Asari Commandos. This, that's kind of neat. Um, when she left Talion's Daughters for the Andromeda Initiative, no reason is recorded. Korra's Huntress training and biotic capability made her a candidate for Alec Ryder's second-in-command and, if warranted, his successor as a pathfinder. That's really cool that she trained with Asari commandos. That's pretty darn awesome. Now, the one thing that also I'm theorizing, the reason why I said Cerberus is because of Korra's last name, Harper. Um, so, spoiler warning for those of you who don't want to know more about some of I think it's the comics, the Mass Effect comics that were published a couple of years ago. Um, you discover the identity of the elusive man in terms of what his name was, and I believe the elusive man's name before he became known as the elusive man was Jack Harper, and Cora haps, happens to share the same last name as the elusive man's. Coincidence? I'm guessing not. I'm theorizing there's something to that, but we probably won't know until later. That's what a lot of fans are thinking, too. My man, Liam Costa. Liam Costa is a human security and crisis response specialist with civilian tactical training. His screening interview states that he was born on Earth, but his parents specialize in interplanetary policy law, and the family moved frequently. Their primary residence was split between London and the Citadel, which makes sense because of his accent. Liam entered university for engineering, but left to train for law enforcement. Oh, cool, so he's an engineer too. Just like me. Though initially driven, like in both in real life and in this game life, though internally driven, he was only briefly stationed as a police officer and described leaving as a necessary move for all concerned. Interesting, I think we're gonna have to talk to him more about that. He transitioned to the multi-species effort uh, of heavy urban search and crisis response. If Liam was disillusioned in law enforcement, service records show that was not mirrored in crisis response. The human contingent, Heavy Urban Search Terrain 1, reported that Liam performed exceptionally in all conditions. Liam said that this, was, this is when he learned of the Andromeda Initiative after meeting former Alliance personnel at a post-hostility relief action. His multidisciplinary skills set him apart and Liam was handpicked by Alec Ryder to support the Pathfinder team. Dr. Ellen Ryder, oh, this is our mom. Ellen Ryder, formerly Harlow, was a pioneering designer of biotic implants. In the 2150s, she was a leading biomedical and cybernetic researcher at UFRJ in Rio de Janeiro. When high human biotics began to emerge as a scientific field, Ellen found possible applications for her work in neurointegrated sweatwear. 
Her early designs for biotic implants formed the framework for later L2 and L3 models. Ellen met Alec Ryder when he was posted to Rio for ICT N7 training before the first contact war. She eventually joined Alec on the Citadel when he was posted there as a military attaché and gave birth to fraternal twins on the station in 2163. Unfortunately, Element Zero, the catalyst for biotic mutations, is a hazardous material poorly understood in the early years of human biotics. After repeat accidental exposures, Ellen eventually developed a terminal neurodegenerative disorder known, later known as AEND. Ah, in her final years, Ellen Ryder built what would later become the Pathfinder implants. Designed to sync with the AI partner Alec Ryder was developing. Ellen died before my creation was fully realized. That's really sad. Well, at least this answers the question of who our mom was. And we actually even have a picture of her, which is more than I was expecting. The Initiative. History, organization, and persons of note in the Andromeda Initiative. The Andromeda Initiative. Brainchild of the visionary billionaire Jean Garson. The Andromeda Initiative was conceived as Garson's personal dream and desire to prove humanity's capabilities beyond the military power demonstrated in the First Contact War. Garson officially began planning the initiative in 2172, announcing her ambitious goal of launching a pioneering colonization effort to Andromeda within 20 years. Internal reports show the struggles that the early initiative faced. However, Gian Garson's personal stake and enthusiasm sustained the initiative until the early 2180s when, after a sudden influx of investment and a new marketing strategy, interest in the initiative grew afresh. Construction of the ARCs was completely, rap and was completely rapidly thereafter, and the Andromeda Initiative officially launched in 2185. The initiative's mission statement is to bridge Andromeda and the Milky Way, create a sustainable, inclusive civilization, and push scientific development forward by centuries. In official literature, Jean Garson characterizes the initiative as continuing the search for humanity's next horizon. Well, we're trying to push the scientific development forward by centuries. We're kind of, you know, have a lot of catching up to do considering how it's been over six centuries since we left. Andromeda Initiative, the Golden Worlds. Golden Worlds are planets in Andromeda's Helios Cluster that are either the strongest possible candidates for settlement or whose resources could bolster the initiative's chances at long-term survival. Based on survey data and long-term projections, some are believed to be garden worlds capable of supporting life. Others are mineral treasure troves that could supply fledgling colonies with vital resources. These worlds were designated habitats one through seven. While not generally used in planetary surveying, the term golden worlds was coined by the Andromeda's initiative's marketing team and has stuck ever since. Very cool. The initiative's early settlement strategy revolves around these golden worlds. The ARCs cannot sustain a population in stasis indefinitely, and the nexus requires vast quantities of refined ore, helium-3, water, ice, and element zero. On the ground, these sounds like mineral scanning to me. On the ground, Pathfinder surveys are essential to confirming quickly that the golden worlds are suitable for outposts. Glossary of terms. A brief refresher of terms in, used in Andromeda's initiative literature. Ammunition block a solid block of metal loaded into a gun. Sand-sized particles are sheared off by the gun's targeting mechanism and then fired as projectiles, allowing a single block to give ammunition for multiple combat encounters. The Citadel, a massive ancient space station in the Milky Way that acted as a political and cultural center of the galaxy. Com buoy, a communications buoy that relays data through corridors of mass free space. Extranet, a publicly accessible information network across the Milky Way akin to a planetary internet on a galactic scale. Such a network is slowly being developed in Andromeda while communications are established. Hard suit, an exploration combat suit usually arm arm armored with titanium or ceramic plating and equipped with kinetic barriers to protect against hostile fire and environmental hazards. Heat sink, also known as a thermal clip, a detachable coolant filled sink used to prevent weapons from overheating. They must be ejected and replaced regularly during firefights. Flash forging. Immediate manufacture of a usually short-lived object from raw materials using an Omni tool or other fabrication device. Omni blades are typically flash forged. FTL, faster than light travel. Kinetic barrier, also known as a shield, used to repel fast moving projectiles, hence kinetic, but does not defend against melee attacks. High gravity kinetic barriers protect starships from debris. Mass accelerator a railgun that lowers the mass of a projectile and then hurls it at a relativistic speeds. Sufficient acceleration allows even tiny projectiles to impact with a tremendous force. Mass relay. A network of mass transit facilities across the Milky Way 
used to immediately transport starships hundreds of light years. No such network exists in Andromeda. Yet. Medigel, a sterile medicinal salve that bonds to flesh, immediately sealing injuries against bleeding or infection. It can be removed with a small ultrasound pulse. Manufacturing, small scale manufacturing of 3D objects, often on the battlefield or for emergency repairs. Omnigel, a compa compound of alloys, ceramic, and other materials suspended in semi molten state, used with an Omni tool to build 3D objects almost instantly. OSD, optical storage disk can obtain data or the blueprints and programming used in, in manufacturing. QEC, quantum entanglement communication, instantaneous communication using two particles that are linked at a quantum level. Andromeda Initiative, Jean Garson. Founder of the Andromeda Initiative, Garson was one of the humanity's wealthiest and most eccentric entrepreneurs in the Milky Way. Her business interests were wide ranging as she made her fortune from investments in a myriad of technology related fields. Always a maverick, it was her vision of traveling to, new, to a new galaxy that set the Andromeda Initiative in motion. Ignoring skeptics and naysayers, Garson spent vast sums of money building or acquiring the necessary technology and ships to make the long voyage possible. It was a private venture, entirely funded by Garson so as to remain free from any government oversight. In 2185, Garson began the long journey to Andromeda aboard the support, the support hub. Nexus. In a speech given on the Eye of Departure, she remarked on the collective knowledge and history represented by the Arcs. We carry all these things like the home tools of an artist. To our great empty canvas, to Andromeda, we go to paint our masterpiece. Garson is slated to serve as the overall leader of the initiative upon arrival. Andromeda Initiative Launch. Intergalactic travel was the topic of extranet discussion in the Milky Way for centuries. Several Asari or Solarian-led expeditions were proposed over the years, but petered out due to lack of interest, insufficient funds, or engineering hurdles. The Andromeda Initiative's use of AI, like myself, allowed many of the technical problems to be solved, but invited disapproval from the Turian hierarchy and the Systems Alliance. Now, this is really cool to see, you know, what the rest of the galaxy thought about the initiative. Building a fleet of dreadnought-sized arcs with private funding required delicate negotiations with the Citadel Council, and the advanced technology essential to its survival in Andromeda was often acquired by unorthodox means. Official initiative records show the Nexus departed first in 2185, escorted by a small squadron of fighters for protection, followed by four arcs that comprised the initial launch wave. Additional vessels were in development, including a quarian-led ship accommodating multiple species. Oh! But construction was slow due to their diverse requirements, and the second launch wave was delayed. Initiate observers remain optimistic. So does that mean that there could have been a second launch that contains a Quarian ship? That would be interesting, maybe in a maybe in a sequel. Pathfinders. Details on the missions and personal files of all initiative pathfinders. The role of a pathfinder. Pathfinders are the tip of the spear for exploring new worlds. While planetary surveying is typically a long-term multiple team process. The initiative found an alternative thanks to Alec Ryder's AI research, an individual equipped with the best training and technology available, and an AI partner that can run complex studies in seconds and 100 test simulations a minute. With AI support, pathfinders can determine within hours whether a planet is suitable for habitation and direct the nexus as to what, the, what colonist block stands the best chance there. Pathfinders are trained to improve the viability of potential planets, initiate first contact with unknown species, find suitable outpost, outpost sites, and handle any external threats before the first colonist touches soil. The presence of a pathfinder is a reassurance that a planet can be settled safely and with a high expectation of success. That's important. That's all very important. Arc species. Multiple advanced civilizations have made the journey from the Milky Way galaxy to Andromeda. The Asari. Data on the biology, culture, and history of the Asari species. I feel like... I've already, this is probably, this, I'm going to see if this is already something that we learned from the other journals from the previous, from the previous Mass Effects. Archaeological evidence shows that abundant Thessians resources and their natural tendency to cooperate helped ancient Asari develop city building, writing, and agricultural unusually early. The tone of research papers suggests that this is a point of pride for Asali scholars. We find out in Mass Effect 3 that um, part of this is also because of some help from the Protheans. The Protheans kind of helped this along as well. They seem to, the Asari seem to be like the teacher's pet of the Protheans. 
After studying a number of Prothean ruins and developing their space program, Asari astronauts found their way to the Citadel, the most advanced station in the Milky Way, deserted since the Prothean extinction. Later, when Solarian explorers reached the station, the Asari proposed a joint government eventually known as the Citadel Council. The Asari helped play a fundamental role in galactic politics ever since. Asari commandos served with distinction in, their, in the Rachni Wars despite heavy losses, and Krogan occupation of the Asari colony Lucia was the tipping point for the Krogan rebellions. In recent years, the Asari have devoted themselves to diplomatic service, including helping to negotiate the 2157 human Turian ceasefire. Renowned for their long lifespan, biotic ability, and diplomatic nature, the Asari were one of the most influential species in the Milky Way. Asari explorers were the first to discover the immense Citadel station, and it was the Asari who first proposed the creation of the Citadel Council. Asari are monogendered, their unique physiology allows them to reproduce with any species via a form of parthenogenesis, passing on genetic traits to their daughters. Almost all Asari are biotic, and the control over their nervous system allows them to hone their powers to heights few other species can match. An Asari can live for a thousand years, passing through life stages referred to as maiden, matron, and matriarch. Asari matriarchs are ancient and respected, often holding immense cultural and economic power, though no such framework exists in the Helios Cluster. Asari Culture and Society The Asari come from Thessia, whose vast element zero deposits from the basis of the most powerful economy form the basis of the most powerful, eco powerful economy in the Milky Way. Living in small city-states, the natural Asari ten tendency to cooperate led to the loose conglomerate known as the Asari Republics. Government operate, operates as an e-democracy. Policy discussions take place over the extranet and are open to all. Interesting. I did not know that. Decisions are made by consensus or with the advice of politically minded matriarchs. The Asari military is relatively small and informal, but no less lethal. Small units of the volunteer Asari commandos, also known as huntresses, handled peacekeeping operations in the Asari space and were among the first council specters. Their thousand-year lifespan gives most Asari a long view of events, investments, social programs, and environmental policies trend toward long-term rather than short-term rewards. This approach drew many Asari to the Andromeda Initiative, undaunted by the centuries-long journey. Asari Biology Though they appear feminine to many species, Asari are a mono-gendered species. During reproduction, they provide two sets of genes to their daughters in a form of partho parthenogenesis, with the second set modified by contact with a partner. During Asari melding, an Asari attunes her nervous system to her partner, giving and receiving electrical impulses through the skin until the two briefly become one unified nervous system. This fine control over their nervous systems contributes to the Asari talent for biotics. Few species can train the level of control that most Asari have by nature. Since joining the Citadel, Asari prefer to mate outside their own species, claiming that this fosters development and understanding. It also it reduces incidences of Ardat Yakshi, pure-blooded Asari who suffer a dangerous genetic disorder. If Asari are compatible with life in Andromeda, that will prove several theories about the fundamental building blocks of life. That is interesting, if they can also meet with any species on the Andromeda galaxy. I think it'd be really interesting if they couldn't, if for some reason so the rules don't apply. That would be really cool to see, if the Asari can't actually... I mean, they could probably try to mate, but they probably... It would be cool if they could, you know meld with the species but not have the ability to bear children from it? I don't know. Humans. Data on the biology, culture, and history of the human species. Human Systems Alliance. The Systems Alliance is a, is a super supranational government that spearheads human space exploration and settlement in the Milky Way. The Alliance is responsible for the governance and defenses of extrasolar colonies and stations and officially represents humanity on the Citadel Council. The Alliance was founded out of necessity as no single nation could fund and manage the rapid expansion of humanity from Sol. The discovery of Prothean ruins on Mars had proven that alien contact was inevitable, earning international support for the Alliance that solidified after Alliance forces liberated Shanxi in the First Contact War. Archived extranet articles and Jean Garson staff bulletins reveal tensions between the Alliance and the Andromeda Initiative. Interesting. Construction of dreadnought-sized ships and persistent rumors of AI development, which could have damaged humanity's standing on the Citadel, led to the Alliance demanding to oversee the Initiative's labs and shipyards. Negotiations continue until the day of the Initiative's departure. N7. 
The most respected Systems Alliance officer training is awarded through Interplanetary Combatives Training, ICT, at the Villa Militar in Rio de Janeiro. Candidates at the Villa are initially given 20-hour training sessions to lead teams through hostile terrain on little flu food or sleep. Trainees who do well are awarded an internal resigna- designation of N1 and are invited to return. Subsequent courses, N2 through N6, are often held off-planet and include instruction in zero-g combat, military free-for-all parachuting, jetpack flight, combat diving, combat instructions, linguistics, and frontline trauma care for human and alien biology. The highest grade of training, N6, provides actual combat experience and conflict zones throughout the galaxy. If the trainee survives these scenarios in admirable, admirable and effective fashion, he or she finally receives the coveted N7 designation. N7 is the only ICT designation that may be worn on field or dress uniforms. Cool. Andromeda species. The Andromeda galaxy is home to many new intelligent species and other life forms. Unknown technology. On the arrival in the Helios cluster, ground teams have cited strange features and technology in multiple locations. This technology appears to be inactive or performing functions that are not fully understood. Whatever its purpose, even cursory scans show this technology is highly advanced and constructed of unknown materials. Alec Ryder and I developed a means to interface with this technology, which he believed was causing the violent weather conditions on Habitat 7. Though he did not survive to develop his theory, the structure was activated. The structure we activated appears to be a form of atmosphere processor. After our interface, Habitat 7's ecology showed a degree of improvement. The energy cloud hampering the Hyperion was diminished. Unknown species. Cited on Habitat 7, this unknown species is proven to be extremely dangerous. Their armor and equipment suggest a technologically advanced species capable of spaceflight, while their battle tactics indicate attritional warfare with a centralized centralized command. In the event of hostile encounters, first contact protocols counsel withdrawal and remote long-term study, but the circumstances of our arrival in the Helios cluster makes this unlikely. Without access to the species' language or an understanding of their motives aside from attacking on site, I cannot advise on procedure aside from avoidance if possible and, and self-defense if necessary. Flora and fauna. Many unique plants, creatures, and other life forms inhabit the Helios Cluster's worlds. Andromeda, wildlife, manta. Nicknamed a manta by Andromeda Initiative observers, this majestic creature has been sighted on several worlds in the Helios Cluster. The Nexus scientists believe it may have originally evolved on a world with heavy deposits of element zero, giving it the ability to lower its mass enough to swim through the air. That's cool. Expanding the muscular gas bladders on its underside allows the creature to rise and orient itself in flight. Despite its size, roughly 30 meters, the manta is not a threat to outposts or explorers. It appears to subsist on mineral deposits from rock formations, racking itself around rock spires, or even against cliff faces to remain camouflaged while it feeds. Their camouflage ability suggests that these mantas have predators or other reasons to remain hidden, but thus far the reasons remain unclear. Planets and Locations The Helios Cluster contains many habitable worlds and other points of interest for the Pathfinder to explore. Habitat 7 The planet known as Habitat 7 was one of the golden worlds selected by the Andromeda Initiative for early settlements. Signs pointed to a lush and biologically diverse tropical region that could easily support an outpost. With no communications from the Nexus or Sister Arcs upon arrival in the Helios Cluster, Helios Cluster, the Hyperion approached Habitat 7 to begin survey and settlement operations as soon as possible, but even visual assessments showed that the planet was no longer viable. Habitat 7 is now a storm-wracked world with an unbreathable argon-nitrogen atmosphere. Intense magnetic activity and unknown metallic elements interacts with the storms, causing interesting but highly destructive electrical phenomena. The investigating Pathfinder team encountered hostile alien life and strange technology on the surface. Reactivating this technology caused a noticeable change in the conditions on Habitat 7. However, the planet is still unsuitable for settlement, and the resulting activation ultimately claimed the life of Alec Ryder, the human Pathfinder. Unknown Phenomenon Upon arriving in the Helios Cluster, Arc Hyperion encountered a massive and extremely dangerous interstellar phenomenon that severely damaged the Arc. Extending beyond the solar system, the phenomenon did not appear on any of our long-range surveys of Andromeda and now lies directly in the Arc Hyperion's course. It is too early to have a clear understanding of this phenomenon, which appears to be an energetic cloud of dense debris with bizarre properties. 
Initial sensor readings are inconclusive since the phenomenon itself causes severe interference. Asked to speculate, I suggested to on preliminary evidence that it may be a dark energy phenomenon. There we go, dark energy. We talked about dark energy in Mass Effect 2 quite a bit during my Let's Play. Despite inconsistencies with our current understanding of dark energy or dark fluid theory, a more disquieting possibility is that this energy cloud exhibits properties so unknown to current physics that our sensors are unable to report accurately. That's kind of creepy. Investigations are continuing. The Andromeda Galaxy. Located 2.5 million light years from the Milky Way, the Andromeda Galaxy is the largest galaxy in the local group. Also categorized as M31, Andromeda is a spiral galaxy roughly 220,000 light years in diameter, containing approximately 1 trillion stars, compared to the Milky Way's 300 billion. The Helios Cluster is a large star cluster located on the galaxy's outer fringe, so we're just in the edge of Andromeda. Sheesh. Andromeda has roughly 14 satellite galaxies which orbit the galactic disk. The galactic disk. Evidence shows a disturbance where one of these companion galaxies, M32, passed through Andromeda's spiral arms several million years ago. Andromeda itself is also accelerating towards the Milky Way at roughly 100 kilometers per second. In roughly 4 billion years, the Andromeda and Milky Way galaxies will collide and merge, forming a new galactic disk. Interesting. Very interesting. That won't be for a while. Maybe in a future Mass Effect game. Technology. Information technology used by the Initiative and other advanced technology, civilization, other advanced civilizations on Helios. Exploration tools. Devices used to survey, investigate, and map a new galaxy. The scanner. Planetary surveying, especially for potential settlement, involves meticulous scanning. However, there has been little pressure to improve planetary scanners. In its search for a better solution for its pathfinders, the Andromeda Initiative began with hardware salvage from Geth platforms and software developed by the Solarian STG. Interesting. With artificial intelligence support, initiative scientists developed a fast, accurate sampling system codenamed Panoptes, Panoptes, linking it to the quantum computing power of an AI, which can produce multiple analyses and predictive models in seconds. They created an omni-tool mounted scanner for the, that com completes accurate surveys in moments instead of weeks. For typical scanning, the Pano Panoptes system uses a transmitted accelerator mass spectrometer, TRAMS. This creates a snapshot of an object's components, atomic weight, and radioactivity, and allows me to produce a more in-depth analysis. For biological materials, the Panoptes system switches to an electrospray ionization system, so plants or animals can be scanned without causing radiation damage. Field repurposing. With limited cargo space aboard the ARCs for specialized gear, the facing unknown dangers in Andromeda, and facing unknown dangers in Andromeda, the initiative's philosophy is adapt to succeed. Colonists are required to say have wide variety of skills. Equipment and weapons are expected to perform multiple functions. However, this adaptability is fueled by non-renewable resources like ammunition, metagel, and power cells, knowing they would not be readily available in Andromeda in an emergency. The initiative's omni-tools can recover and repurpose appropriate resources to serve a similar function. Liquid coolant allows weapons, heat sinks to be reused, organic, organic compounds can be refined into metagel, and so on. When these resources are available, the user is alerted via an interface between their user scanner and their HUD. Jump Jets Once propriety hardware for Turian Special Forces, Initiative Armor comes with jump jets as standard. These jets allow a user to make extremely high jumps or hover for several seconds. All colonists are trained in their operation to evade predators or environmental hazards, obtain resources, or conduct maintenance in high places safely. The jump jet itself cons constitutes of a helium-3 microthruster with tungsten hafnium carbon ca carbide casing. A gyroscopic element zero core functions to both keep the user oriented in flight and lower their mass when hovering, keeping fuel expen expenditure down. Hard-coded safety pre features prevent continuous operation of jump jets to avoid injuring the user or melting their equipment. Technology, consumable resources. While Andromeda's initial, I love that, blast Blastos, that's super cool, Blastos cereal. While Andromeda's initiative gear and weaponry is designed to be as versatile as possible, extraordinary circumstances sometimes arise. Pathfinders and scout forces often turn to less orthodox resources to ensure they survive hostile conditions. Adrenaline is a nickname for a prototype Omnigel OSD package. When deployed, it bypasses Omnitool safeties to manufacture, small-scale manufacture, new heat sinks and provide temporary but powerful boosts to armor. A shield capacitor immediately overlocks the user's shields, 
bringing them to full power and giving them a boost. This boost is unstable, however, and will be lost the next time the shield is breached. A life support pack boosts the environmental management system of a user's hard suit, enabling them to cope with environmental hazards for a longer period. Special ammunition packs apply a variety of effects to weapons fire. Incendiary ammo coats projectiles in thermite paste as they are fired. The paste adheres to, to and burns through armor. Cryo ammo uses Bose-Einstein condensate to freeze an enemy or slow them. Disruptor ammo projectiles carry an electrical charge that, that, that damages enemy hard suit systems. The Cobra RPG package uses volatile solution of Omnigel to manufacture a short-lived but extremely dangerous projectile. Launched from an Omni tool, it hits with the same explosive power as a portable rocket launcher. You've got to be kidding me. Omni tools. Omni tools are handheld devices that combine a computer microframe, sensor analysis pack, and manufacturing fabricator. Versatile and reliable, an Omni tool can be used to analyze and adjust the functionality of most standard equipment, including weapons and armor, from a distance. The holographic haptic interface also functions as a communications device. With sufficient Omnigel or other raw materials, usually converted from salvaged light alloys, plastics, or ceramics, an Omnitool's fabrication module can flash forge small three-dimensional objects or emergency suit patches. This allows quick repairs or modifications in the field. The Andromeda Initiative's Omnitools are designed for reliability and efficient recycling of materials. Pathfinder Omnitools take design inspiration from the models used by Solarian Intelligence Services, prioritizing the computer microframe to allow lag-free scanning and AI support. Settling Helios. Technology to build a new home from the ground up. Technology. Charting Andromeda. Charting the Andromeda galaxy for habitable planets presents a unique challenge. Observation is limited by light and, the, and given Andromeda's distance, any observations from the Milky Way are 2.5 billion years out of date. Enough time for a planet to have altered, it, altered irrevocably. Initial attempts to identify settlement sites were made by obtaining Asari astronomical surveys and running them through the predictive models, but Gene Garson was unwilling to risk thousands of colonists without solid information. Eventually, the initiative obtained promising data from McWarren explorers who claimed to have found a Geth array on the fringes of the Perseus Vale. This array was supposedly built from three massive relays, using sensors in the combined relay corridor to form an of FTL telescope to observe space, dark space beyond the galactic rim. Why the Geth expended so much effort to study dark space is not known. Amongst these observations were near contemporary surveys of Andromeda. When our predictive models confirmed them with this acceptable margin, the initiative was able to begin identifying golden worlds. So as I said in, in my Mass Effect 2 LP, um, dark energy or dark matter, I think dark energy, was supposed to be a major part of the Mass Effect plotline. In fact, a lot of people believe that the dark energy storyline was a lot more satisfying and a much more making sense plot than what we ended up with Mass Effect 3 at the end of Mass Effect 3. And a lot of you who are watching probably have heard about the big giant Mass Effect 3 ending, I guess, situation. I wouldn't call it a kerfuffle, but like a situation. And a lot of that has to do with that they ended up changing the original planned story I personally think that the dark energy story would have been better, a lot better than what they ended up giving us in Mass Effect 3, but I'm also one of those people who didn't mind the ending of Mass Effect 3 nearly as much, much as most other people. Which means we might get more of a dark energy storyline in Andromeda. That's my guess. Cryogenic stasis. For many species, early long-range exploration relied on cryogenic stasis. Without modern FTL capability or long-distance transit methods like mass relays, the distances involved in space travel meant that most crews would die of old age before reaching their destination. Cryogenic stasis gradually lowers the body's temperatures enough to slow its vital functions, but not low enough for damaging ice crystals to form. Before the pod generates a mass effect stasis field that suspends both the individual and the interior environment in the pod. Contrary to depic depictions in popular media, the, the individual is not conscious of time passing. From most travelers' perspective, they lie down in the pod only to be awoken moments later. Stasis failure, while regrettably common for early expeditions, have been vastly improved over the years. Even in the event of catastrophic system failure, multiple monitoring VIs and fail-safes are in place to initiate an emergency wake-up. Now that's important because, let me tell you, a lot can happen in 600-something years. A lot can happen. So you're definitely putting a lot of eggs in the basket if you don't have the fail-safes in case something wrong happens while everybody's asleep. Tech and biotics. 
the science behind abilities that seemingly defy laws of physics. Technology element zero, ESO. Also known as ESO, the rare material known as element zero generates a field when subjected to an electrical current which raises or lowers the mass of all objects within it. This mass effect forms the basis of modern technology from weapons and manufacturing to enabling faster than light travel. Element zero is generated when solid matter such as planet, a planet is affected by the energy of a star going supernova. The material is common in the asteroid debris that orbits neuron stars and pulsars. Though mining such regions is extremely hazardous and requires significant investment. Various isotopes of, of element zero have been identified, though the rarest have only been observed in laboratory conditions. Surveys of the Helios crust cluster suggested the region is rich in, is rich in element zero, which has a deciding factor in the Andromeda, which was a deciding factor in Andromeda's initiative decision to settle there. Without ESO, the initiative's technology would quickly become obsolete. Technology FTL drive. A starship travels faster than light using an element zero drive core. In special relativity, an object approaching light speed effectively gains in mass until it would take infinite energy to repel it. But a negative electrical current running through an ESO drive core lowers the starship's mass, allowing it to travel at FTL speeds. Mot motive force is provided by the ship's thrusters, chemical rockets, commercial fusion torch, or military anti-proton drive, in addition to the FTL drive core. Without thrusters, the ship has no ability to move. Standard drive cores build up a static charge during operation, and it must be discharged periodically. Otherwise, the core discharges into the ship itself with catastrophic results, cooking everybody inside. The initiative's drive cores, intended for long-term voyages, are designed to recycle or reduce static buildup. Mass effect fields. Element zero can increase or decrease the mass of a, vol of a volume of space-time when subjected to an electrical current. With a positive current, mass is increased. With a negative current, mass is decreased. The stronger the current, the greater the magnitude of the dark energy mass effect. In space, low mass fields allow FTL travel and inexpensive surf surface-to-orbit transit. High mass fields create artificial gravity and push space debris away from the vessels. In manufacturing, low mass fields permit the creation of evenly blended alloys, while high mass compaction creates dense, sturdy construction materials. The Andromeda Initiative's technology relies heavily on mass effect fields, from reduced mass supply drops for outposts to the impressive long-range drive cores of the arcs. Technology, biotics. Biotics are rare individuals with the ability to create and manipulate mass effect fields. Given the correct implants and careful training, a biotic can raise defensive barriers, yank opponents off their feet, or shred an enemy apart at the molecular level. A biotic gains these abilities after exposure to dust form element zero in utero or via secondary exposures at a young age. Though this often results in fatal cancer, roughly 10% of those exposed develop element zero nodules along their nervous system. Once activated by the body's electrical impulses, these nodules allow the biotic to create mass effect fields though most need a neural implant to wield them effectively. Some species like the Asari are naturally biotic, but human biotics are still relatively rare, and many view them with suspicion. The Andromeda Initiative has proven attractive to biotic applicants, like Cora, like, um, Cora. And I think that's it, guys. Oh, ships and vehicles, we have one more. This is the, the vessels and transports that makes exploration possible. Arc Hyperion. Arc Hyperion serves as the main vessel for carrying human settlers abound for Andromeda. Named after a Greek mythological figure associated with knowledge of celestial bodies, the Hyperion represents a breakthrough in intergalactic travel. Substantial money and resources are were devoted to its construction, all privately funded by Gian Garson and the Andromeda Initiative. Built to withstand the rigors of a nearly 2.5 million light year voyage, the Hyperion is outfitted with ODSY drive core technology which allows a ship to make a 600-year voyage safely at FTL speeds. It features enough stasis pods to accommodate approximately 20,000 settlers and crew. Arc Hyperion left the Milky Way in 2185 as part of the initial wave of departures under the command of Captain Nozomi Dunn. Cool. And I think that's about it. Priority Ops Nexus Reunion Travel to the Tram. Okay. This is our map. Missions, priority ops, completed missions, completed tasks, got it. Cool. Investigate the flares, 
And then we've got inventory. Cool. All right, I'm going to check these out in the next video because I was supposed to just make this a codex video. So I'll do that in next. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, love yourselves and love each other.